Hello everybody, got another episode here for you. Today we're going to talk to uh, Raja James. He is a uh, notorious uh, Team Serious. I think he was on a real tear last year. Uh, won the Battle for Ohio with his team. And then some other lesser important thing, I think it was the Vintage World Champions or whatever. But anyhow, he's uh, kind of a legend of his own. Uh, good dude. And since... Uh, their team won the battle for Ohio last year. They get to choose the main format for this year. Uh, we talk about that. We talk about a lot of just uh, kind of random things, a little potpourri. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy it. And um, if anyone else is uh, putting together um, team champions for your state, um, we're hoping to do something maybe later part of next year, 2024, in the uh, Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area, do a... Uh, Kind of open invite event uh, for our, you know, pulling maybe Michigan, Tennessee, Indiana people, Pennsylvania. Uh, we've never done a big event, so we're we're in the, the planning phases for that. So if by chance there happens to be a, a Pennsylvania champion and uh, you know Indiana champion and a Michigan, we could uh, definitely set up a, a Mid Ohio main event. Just throwing that out there. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you. Right on. So what's going on, guys? Talking about. So I finished Eternal Weekend. We don't want to talk about vintage. We want to talk about old school, right? No, I want to. I, I don't know crap about vintage, and I got the world champion or whatever you are, the the galaxy champion <laughs> on here. Hey, give me an update, man. Uh, fill, in, fill in us old schoolers. What's what's it like these days? Uh, do you still play power, or does everyone play power? Or, you know, I don't even know. That's a that's a great question. Uh, so first, I'll say uh, it was a really good time. Uh, was that like last weekend? Or it was just this past week? weekend. Just past this weekend? past right, weekend. Cool. Yeah, that's why I was kind of saying like, oh yeah, I gotta. I'm like focusing yeah. on that. Just thinking because I like as you mentioned, I was defending uh, champ from last year. Uh, but as with any magic, it takes a lot of luck, right? You have to play well with the with the lucky good hands that you draw, right? And the kind of the format is for most people is best understood as kind of a rock, paper, scissors, where you have uh, kind of three decks plus one or two other archetypes that are kind of the top decks. Uh, so like kind of a 20 percent split. But it, it's not as harsh as that, you know, rock, uh, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah, there yeah. You go. Perfect. Perfect. So so the idea is that, you know, your deck is going to have three good matchups out of those other four probably right so every deck so just it, it you have to draw good matchups as well as drawing good cards right so yeah, you're, you're, you're up against serious competitors at that level so yeah it, yeah it does take a little bit of luck you gotta have a few good draws in there for sure yeah you can't you can't deny that so and and then i think this year especially that's evidenced by the fact that we had so many more players the size was double of last year and i think people just remembered oh yeah vintage paper vintage uh and they saw it happen last year i think also there was there was six months advance notice this year oh, where yeah. last year there was literally six weeks so that makes a huge difference for people in our demographic right to be able to have time to plan be able to get things on the calendar and get time off right so how many so, people were there uh, 380, 380, Jeez. it was under 400, uh, but it so was 380 is, something. So sorry, is, is eternal weekend? Is this tournament like invite only or is it no. just like whoever the fuck wants to it's show an open. up? Yeah, it's an open. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. Open. So, yeah. so you can be playing against like real people. And then you could be playing against someone like me who's like trying to read the cards. as play. You could be. Yeah. And, and, and I would <laughs> okay. say, and, and, and. Uh, I'm in my, you know, I just realized I did this call like in the wrong place in my basement, but it should be fine, uh, <laughs> for the volume, but it should be fine if, if I don't hear anything. Uh, no, just for the rest of the people in my house. Cause I'm loud. Uh, uh <laughs> I'm good. Screw them. Uh, yeah, it's good. On you. I'm good. It's <laughs> fine. Don't worry. Uh, so, so yeah, what I was going to say is there was a, le it's legacy also. So we turn the eternal for the official from wizards perspective is, vintage and legacy right so the legacy portion is on saturday because that's the much more popular format of the two because also like pe more people can play because they own the cards for it and uh so 
the legacy being on Saturday, actually, a, I, many people played unpowered decks on Friday just to like get to play in the same arena as powered decks, just to sure. like see see real power on the table, right? And I uh, actually, my round four opponent was playing an unpowered Lavinia deck, um, which, if you know about Lavinia, she's really harsh hate bear. Uh, it, she's a blue and one, uh, a blue and a white, and basically it says your opponents cannot cast spells if they if they cast a spell that doesn't cost mana, like a mox counter, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so if they spent no mana to cast that spell, counter it, and they cannot play spells except for the number of lands they have, CMC or less. So they have one land they can play, one CMC spells. They have two lands. So that really shuts down Workshop's up player, right? Because oh, they're playing dang, a Black Lotus yeah. land. And that means Lavinia says, no, you can <laughs> play a, a Mana Vault, right? Or a Soul Ring. But until you get two more lands, you can't play an actual three Mana spell. Is that uh, no cheating? Oh, why would they print that? Holy crap. Shake so that was my, whole yeah. yeah. So th- that was my round four opponent. And his way of fighting, you know, broken stuff was to try to get that hate bear in play, right? And so he played that along with some other blue and white hate bears that are effective in vintage. Um, and then other lock pieces like null rods and uh, three balls. Basically played like chrome moxes and said like, I'm going to lock myself out if it hurts them more. If I if I end that with a guy in play, right, then I, yep, I can yep. just attack for two for ten attack turns. For right? two or never. And uh, yeah, so he against me his turn one was uh wasteland mana vault three ball <laughs> that was his turn one i didn't have a force of will uh so i was pretty much locked out of that game like there's nothing i could do because my hand was and then he just kept drawing wastelands that was the other thing is that i had three lands but he had three wastelands and then my my game was over basically so uh that was an unpowered deck so to your point jason like Yes, there's a lot of, and there was actually an unpowered deck that was live for top eight going into the last round. So it was a mono red deck, like a mm. prison, prison, prison deck with mono red and goblins, lots of goblins. I went, went to pull up the uh, the website and freaking <laughs> right here, right on top of the freaking page. You know. Hey. I uh, I realized after that I missed this opportunity to get like some kind of play mat made with like you oh. are playing against the North American champ from 2022. So just so people know, you know, like who were they messing with when they sat down? Because I feel like uh, as to your point, there's a lot of real players in this like that. You might know their name from their right, yeah, YouTube just... channel or something, and I'm not that, but just so they know who they're messing with, right? Uh, was this thing little... real? Was there actually a Black Lotus printed? No. So what oh, those okay. are, are that's an original painting. It's like a big uh, big picture kind of thing. Just like, like yeah, that. just like what I'm holding there. Yeah, I got you. That's, okay, that's, cool. that's a, mine is a repaint of a time walk. So that was, that's the prize, basically. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a painting. And then they print this cardboard frame and they put it in the frame. And so that's Sick what the, win- the winner gets. Yeah. Damn. It was one of the best arts, I would say. That's so cool. So, so how'd you end up doing? I mean, uh, you didn't take it down. Did you? No, <laughs> no. But, uh... I um I, I started off okay. I was 2-0. And then I played against, ironically, the deck archetype that I won with last year, the Mono White <laughs> Initiative deck. And uh, I was playing Oath of Druids combo deck, and that game went to game three. I was in a critical spot, and I cast the wrong spell and made a mistake, and it cost me the, the match. And then that set me up for that game against my that blue-white unpowered opponent in round four, which I dropped. And so that put me at 2-2, which basically means you're out of the hunt for top eight at that point so i stayed in it uh because i i paid for the the seat i was gonna take the ride so i had some more fun games after that i played two more i played a total of three mirror matches in the day and i uh i won all of them um so my deck was set up to beat the mirror and uh, i'm trying to recall did i win all of them i know i won one of them can't recall if it was like anyway uh so i ended up four and five 
Uh, I oh. stayed in for the for the whole nine rounds, and um, yeah, had some fun. Um, were, were, were they playing old school at all there? Were they like old school side events still, or? I mean, there was a there was an old school Thursday event, like offsite event, uh, that was hosted by Jimmy Cooney. Um, okay. Uh, from the uh, Dice City, um, uh, in DC, and so he was there with his shop, uh, as a booth. And they ended up hosting an offsite, like unofficial style old school that that he called the North American Old School Championships. Um, <clears throat> so, and then he actually got a playmat commissioned too. That was like kind of a copy of the uh, Players Ball City in a Bottle playmat. Yeah, Do you guys mm-hmm. remember that one? That yeah, so I've seen sweet, it. right? The Drew Tucker one. Uh, yeah. So. Jimmy kind of got a copy of it, but like a Pittsburgh in a bottle thing. Uh, I think I saw that on the internet somewhere. I think somebody posted a picture of it. Yeah, yeah it looked it looked fine. Uh, I I mean, I thought it was cool the first time. <laughs> first time, I guess maybe you could try to do something different, but still cool. Drew Drew Tucker's sweet. So, um, and they had a bunch of cool artists on site. Um, Drew came over as an artist feature. Yeah, so a bunch of good artists there. Yeah. I went, uh, I don't know, God, I remember, it might have been 2018, I went, just started playing old school. Okay. And actually, that's the way we went. Eric, at the time, was like invite only, and uh, my son Eric won um, a legacy event at Gen Con, and it gave him an invite or something like that. Like, you got like okay. two buys, so we're like, oh, we should go check oh, it out. Oh, buys, the same, yeah, they don't even like, give out buys anymore. That's Yeah, like, it was yeah. something like that. So anyhow, by winning that event, and now you got a, a box or two, and a big deal so i like, oh, we should go to eternal weekend yeah, and then no. actually at at gen con there were these dudes jamming old school which just like old white bordered like nothing crazy and he's like yeah we should we should get into this like this doesn't look that hard to do and i'm like all right cool so went there and then i started playing in the the legacy i was playing lands or something and there was going to be like an eight person old school event. I just dropped out of the main event and played it. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm going to enjoy myself more and, and yeah, just yeah. play the lost my ass off the line. I had no idea what I was doing. And this ended up having way more fun doing old school. And I've never played anything since then, really. And that was, that was it. But and then they had the big, uh, the big, you know, the main event back then. It was huge. It was a couple hundred people for the, uh, was it Sunday? I guess they did the big, um, Old school event back then, but yeah, 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 the Sunday old school. So, so this one um, was so (laughs) wild. Um, They had pre-modern side events on site. So the official uh, tournament held sanctioned pre-modern side events, and there was one pre-modern that I saw was for a winner cradle. So they the winner got a guy's cradle. Apparently that's a, um, that's a nice prize. Yeah. So yeah, the, the TO really like recognizing, you know, formats people wanted to play and putting it on the thing. So that was cool. I thought um, that they did that, but the, the big story of the weekend really was the legacy turnout, which was over a thousand. They had, uh, yeah, they had cap, they had capped the event at 945 and coming into the weekend, apparently, like people had missed out or hadn't gotten to register. And so people were still just coming like their if their group is coming. So that day, apparently, or on Friday, they announced they, they got like another 95 seats or something. And so it was 1045. I think it was capped uh, like there was people still on the wait list to try to like play. <laughs> wow. uh, yeah. So that's like super wild. But again, I, I would say the storyline is like what i said it's that people in our demographic like if you give them a chance to plan they want to play magic there's still a lot of people who have interest in playing eternal magic just not like modern or like pioneer right (laughs) or popper they want to play legacy with duels and like possibly vintage with power or unpowered even against power right so um and yeah actually don't allow ce though do they they don't allow ce no, I feel like it's yet. kind of silly. You could throw that in there. No, not yet. Not yet. Um, I could see it might, but this is still the sanctioned thing. So, um, you know, I feel like, you know, legacy players would, it wouldn't be the vintage players who cared as much as legacy players who wouldn't want to play against like CE duels and stuff. Um, I feel like that would be where you would get more resistance actually, because they paid for their, 
They paid right, all this money, yeah. but you yeah. know, like it's kind of like Swedish old school or whatever. You know? I don't know. I always, I always thought it was funny that, uh, like, everybody's always like, yeah, proxy, whatever. We just want more people to play. But then when it's like, hey, well, you guys want to make this like legal? They're like, fuck you, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, this and but this one is again. This one's the only one that you have to play sanctioned legal really you know at all this is only one per year right and like yeah. i actually no, i actually kind of let... cool if there is a sanctioned uh you know i think that's pretty cool like i let oh, Ange- i, know, I, I let angelo the but... bizarre deck to play like angelo never played vintage before in paper for real he had he's played proxy a bunch of times he's played bizarre he's played po um and i said i'm not gonna play the bizarre deck do you i have the whole thing would you want to play vintage He's like, uh, yeah, like I would love to play vintage. So did, did he take it down? Freaking bastard! No, I mean he did better than me though. He, I think he was the opposite. He was a five four. So, yeah, the five four uh, record with uh, bazaars. There's a lot of broken things you can do with bazaar in in vintage. So yeah, yeah there's a lot of a lot of it. weird cards here. I didn't. I didn't figure you wanted to dig into different nah, cards. I just but... pulled up the winning deck just to see if I recognize anything, and I do not. So, um, but no, nah, it's kind of cool. I mean, I, um, it's fun. I to think hear this about. is the this is the top deck after. This is top. Uh, this think... is eleven nineteen. This is uh, this is the European one. This is the Euro. Oh, okay. I got you. The the you'll be there's some wild cards. There's actually a workshop deck that won uh, the North America vintage and uh it is a uh workshop deck that plays a card called uh, uh coveted jewel and uh so get this man coveted jewel uh yeah bring that up coveted jewel <laughs> it's so wild uh it is six mana it's been out for like six years i used to play this card because it's so bonkers right and I saw it and I was like, this, this is so broken. It's an ancestral recall that costs six mana, right? 39 cents, man. I was just, I was just playing. Right. But like when it enters the battlefield, ancestral recall. Okay. And it taps and- for three mana. So it's a virtual, it virtually costs three, right? Because it gives you immediately three mana back. Right. But- so the way you abuse this is by copy artifact effects, right? So there's a there's a there's an artifact copy card called Frexian Metamorph. I remember can, that one. I've been around long enough to remember that. Okay, yeah. so you can you can cast that off a workshop and pay oh, two shit. life, right? Yeah. Damn. And coveted jewel taps for three. So if I play a coveted jewel, draw three. And one of those three is a Frexian Metamorph. Guess what? Copy that. I can just I can just play it draw again off the jewel mana, right? Draw three more. So then you're just drawing your whole deck by keeping continuously copying these coveted jewels, and then you'll eventually draw like uh your just a vault key, and then you kill them with Urza Saga oh. tokens, right? Or if and then turns you, or whatever, and yeah, yeah, you take take all the turns, and then you kill them with the Urza Saga construct tokens. Um, so yeah, you just try to get to this critical go off turn, and then you start just going off, drawing your whole deck. And if you can't kill them, then you just need to make enough guys or do enough to like stop whatever their plan is if you have to pass, right? But you should be able to kill them uh, once you. That's start pretty playing. sweet. So is this kind of like new tech that just popped up, or I mean. No, as you can see, it came out in Commander 2018 was when it came out. 2018, yeah. So it's been out for a long time. That's what's cool about Vintage. Like, no new... The the card that got printed that really pushed us over the top was the One Ring, because Metamorph can copy the One Ring also. Oh, right. And you get the Enters, like, the protection trigger when you copy it. See, Um, I would just freaking play Titania's song with this thing. (laughs) And you got a six six with no abilities. Then after you've drawn the three cards, I mean, come on, it still you taps for a mod. A real format, it's, it or still taps for a mod. Tokens, but the Shit. problem is, is if if they attack you and you don't block their creature, they get the coveted. Not jewel. with, uh, not with uh, 
Titania's, Titania's song, song. It just it loses, loses its ability. Uh, boom. Yeah, it has no ability. This is a six six then. You broke 24 it. Twenty four world champ, Brian. You got yeah, this. I'll freaking show up it. and take him down. Yeah. So it was it was yeah. overall, and then we played middle school on on Saturday. We had twenty for um, Eric Caffrey, um, one of the team series guys hosted the middle school world championships, and that was won by Alurin, um, by yeah. one of the guys from from Texas. Um, and then I I don't know the second place deck, uh, but that was Stu from Texas. And then the third place was my buddy Max, an Ohioan. Um, he was playing a really cool uh, Psychotog brew that was like uh, Psychotogs uh, Grow. It was a Grow. Um, grow query, and dog query, in the dog area. Yeah, Query and Dryad, exactly. And so the Alluren deck is cool, um, as you pulled up there. Yeah, like so he basically kills you by gaining infinite life and then having a mesmeric fiend in play, and then he just exiles your whole hand during your draw step. Oh, yeah. You, like using the mes- mesmeric fiend. I thought the price system. came down. Yeah, dang, look at that. That is it's when I was trying to play whatever the hell it was, like old school or middle school or pre-modern. I thought Aloran seemed cool. Yeah. Aloran is cool. paying 50 bucks on those, but yeah, it's definitely come down a bit. I think the deck he was playing is is pre modern legal also. I would have to look at the list, but it's almost fully pre modern legal if I if I so based on the cards I saw. I, I lost to the Alluren deck uh, on the way to it winning the thing. So I got fifth in that out of twenty. I was playing Pox. Um nice. and uh Yeah. Yeah. Just basically I had like these altars that I haven't really got to play, so <laughs> wanted to play him. <laughs> well, that's awesome. So yeah, good, good, good weekend. Good event then, cool. Yeah, you've been. Um, what's the what's the old school scene like up there this so far this year? Um, yeah, we haven't, we haven't seen you since uh, the middle of the sticks in Ohio. I don't know. Even... Yeah, man, I uh, I played um, in the summer derby that was so long ago, and I played. I don't remember what did I play. Did you go to Kumite this year? Or? Um, I did not uh did i no um wait yeah i know i did um and what did i play <laughs> i'm bringing it up yeah because you played you played against um rebel from columbus or something you yeah played. back in april yeah. This, yeah, this is in april bad. yeah and i played um because we saw susan there um and john won yeah i don't remember what oh here it is what is the deck it's bad um it was oh I played the David Lance defense. <laughs> I played Pink Weenie, and uh, so I played David Lance's deck because he had won the year before and he could not attend. So I played it and played it very much worse than he would have played it apparently. So yeah, uh, but <laughs> I had fun uh, at Kumite there, and then um, yeah, Summer Derby. Like I said. I remember I blocked it out. I didn't do good. Um, what did I play? Um, I don't remember. But um, I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm going to play in the Winter Derby. I don't know what that format is, but for me it's kind of cyclical, like format wise, right? Like I go from kind of vintage to middle school to old school, kind of in a cycle. And that's a, a, a way that I enjoy magic and stay like kind of you know interested is by switching up the formats. So, um, and yeah, even winter, within, yeah, winter derby signups are next Monday. Perfect. And I think it's going to be Swedish. Ooh, Swedish. I think that's what I saw. Okay, but well, with, I, but with reprints or whatever, you know, you don't have to be. Yeah, just well, that the sucks. Swedish uh, rule set with uh, okay, yeah. So it sucks only because I just got my workshops signed at Eternal Weekend. So uh, I got one of them signed, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, I only get to yeah. play one. Yeah, Winter Derby format, Swedish. Uh, right. Summer Derby twenty twenty four four strip Borel, aka okay. the good one. <laughs> so, got so those you, already, up. you already announced that. Okay, so Swedish format. Uh, probably one Scheherazade too, right? Is Scheherazade restricted? Gosh, I don't know about 
Swedish and Shawnees? I don't know. That's a deep question. Mm. Got mm. no mana burn. Yeah. Well, I would say, I don't know. Swedish is, is when I normally play the Tabernacle Prison deck. Um, but I like to play that in Atlantic because I can play multiple shops then. Um, but, yeah, what do you guys play in Swedish? What's good in Swedish? I See, I have not done much Swedish. I think... I might have something, but um, looks like Shaharazard, you're good to go. I don't see. Yeah, I think, but Dave normally restricts it in the online tournaments because, like, I'm not going to play it to be a jag, but like, someone's going to play it to be a jag, right? Uh, <laughs> so, <clears throat> is Stripmon? Like a, oh yeah, Stripmon's restricted. In some strip yeah, is restricted. One workshop strip, is restricted. One workshop. Boom. No mana burn. It's it's kind of weird. It's kind of like. No Old fallen empires, like, so you can't yeah. even play like a good bizarre deck, really. Um, so yeah, it's 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 hard for for me to play Swedish just because I'm um, no, normally I'm fine uh, playing whatever, but then I like start to build a deck. It's more about like oh, oh that'll be good. Oh no, I can't do that. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I might. Um, I might do my. I was just working on it. it was an enchantress with um <laughs> uh power stink power leech psychic venoms and gaseous form just Ooh. a bunch of got okay, control magic uh, okay. some power leak so they gotta tap their lands it's it's basically you kill almost psychic venom and just stall out it's a really stupid deck but i think you it's gotta pretty put much. um you know, I mean, those those decks can also just be randomly good. Like if you have energy flux in it, right? Like you just like, oh, here's energy yeah, flux. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can just right? get away like, doing that. Um, you know, like, uh, but that's in color, right? I like that in color. Um, but I, I, yeah, I do want to I mean, rewind you can, you can one second. Wild, you can run Enchantress with you know four wild growth because there's only one strip mine. So I was worried about the blowout on that. But I, I don't like know. That. It's still obviously Enchantress is awful. So I don't know. Ever <laughs> since my, my favorite moment was when the the freaking uh, rich guy from France or whatever was like all alpha and he's like, "What is that? Oh, you Americans play the play the funny cards or something like that." And I damn near beat him with a freaking. Uh, I don't the care funny cards. The legends are. Yeah, you Americans. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Us Americans are having fun. You asshole. I'm like, yeah, you're gonna have a good time. Huh? But. uh so anyhow, Speaking of fun, I, no, I have to tell you guys that you'll appreciate the fact that both Steven and Angelo, I I just f- fucked up and forgot mine. I my they both were jamming Eben Ante at the uh Airbnb. Nice. And um nice. I finally made Angelo let me pilot his deck after he lost like five cards to Steven. I'm like, let me play, dude. Just let me play. And so I sat down and I'm like uh, okay, your deck just sucks. Uh, like, I, thought, <laughs> I thought he was just drunk, but it turned out that his just deck kind of sucks. So, um, but yeah, it was that was fun, and I wanted to make sure you guys knew that uh, I got to uh, draw a penis on a card and give it to Steven. So nice, <laughs> very nice. That's what it's all about. Yep, <laughs> highlight. Yeah, nothing like putting a good fuck face on a card or something like that. Huh? Yeah. I feel like we have we not uploaded stuff from oh no this we, was uh we haven't been playing like a whole lot angelo i'll have to poke angelo and tell and steven and tell him to upload their uh their aunties i need to uh because like i won a mox off of angelo and then immediately lost it to steven and evan <laughs> mox um <laughs> nice uh, yeah and uh i'm like how did that happen man and uh, Steven's been playing Balduvian Hordes deck. Yeah, uh, you nice know, you guys that. know that guy. So like, oh, this yeah. is a scourge, man. Like, we like no, we no, we can't beat it. Like, uh, so I I just I have to figure out some anti Hordes tech. <laughs> I want to not remember old eight Cox. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I missed that one. Damn, that, that was I was gonna say that's an Angelo. I think yeah, that's an Angelo. That's a good one. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll be playing some of that when uh, uh, Battle for Ohio rolls back around here again. Which is, yeah, that's the main topic for tonight. We got to, everyone, uh, so you're saying we got a plan. We got to figure out what the hell we're playing this year. And Yes. Uh, Good segue. Good segue. You guys are the uh, the official winners, so you get to officially pick the main event. Um, yeah, yeah. So we were talking, and uh, you know, the team format was really is really great, right? Uh, yeah, it I allows, do like that. I think it's fun. Yeah. I mean, for you know, mo- mo- many tournaments, you get you know to go play against other people. You get to sit down across from your opponent, right? But that's like four or five people you're interacting with in the day. But in this format, you have, you know, your two teammates where you get to kind of hang out with the whole day during the tournament. And then during games, you got, you know, three other people sitting across from you that you're getting to interact with. Right. And that's just really awesome. So I think that, you know, that's going to be the best thing for us to bring back is that team format again. Um, and, uh, that unified kind of format. Um, with you know some some like small variations to kind of encourage uh, creativity or change at, at a minimum, right? <laughs> or at least yeah, some, yeah. see some different stuff, right? So I think what we want to do is say basically we shouldn't have the same seventy fives, right? And if you're like if you piloted an archetype in the in the previous you know event, that you should not pilot that archetype again, basically. So what it about be, so? We were just, I was, I was kind of trolling you, really. I was like, well, just what if, because I know you love, you got such cool altars and everything. I was like, how about you can't play any card you played last year? Just sort of screw Any with you. single card. <laughs> yeah, any any card that you played last year, you can't play this year in your deck. And you're all almost like, yeah, that ain't so bad. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty crazy. So if you played, uh, you know, Burn last year, now you're the mono green guy this year or something like that. I don't know. I kind of like that. Or like you say, you could just do, don't do the same archetype. That's, I mean, I'm, that seems fine yeah, too. Yeah, it's basically, it's, I mean, if you just said 100% don't play any of the same cards, that might be somewhat limiting to deck construction. That's the only yeah. thing I would say. But like, let's be in the spirit of the thing. Like, so for example, I, I in our team, like I played uh, the power, basically. We put all the power into the combo deck, right? So right, right. In, in our trio, for example, like I, we also then had like a uh, pink weenie and a mono green. So like in that example, like I would play something more like a pink weenie or more like an aggro mono green or a mono black and not like a power deck, for example. So we just ask everyone to be in the spirit of the thing, right? So, um, but like, okay, you play Disenchant in your deck, like, okay, you can play Disenchant again. Like, we're not gonna say you don't get to play Disenchant, but don't be and a dick. And it can't, can't be the same 75 either, okay? I like uh, yeah, like you can't just say, okay, you're gonna pile this deck, we're all just gonna switch seats, right? You can't do that, right? Nice, okay, I like it, I like it. Because, because of course, maybe someone feels like, like I feel like we, we don't feel like we cracked the code because obviously we dropped a match against Columbus guys, right? So our configuration of decks is obviously not a thousand percent the right ones, right? But maybe if those guys thought that their decks cracked the code and they just wanted to switch seats, you don't get to do that, right? So, um, so yeah, I think that, I, like that sh- I think that should like okay. cause, cause enough like, kind of different looks i think right like, yeah, and that's people kind of, a little out I, of their comfort zone i mean if you if you got a good a good player for your city you're representing you can you can run a different different deck you can't be the, yeah just yeah and i guess i would also say whatever and i think that's kind of cool i would also say if you're bringing the same trio maybe consider and i'm not going to require it but consider a new captain Right. So uh, whoever's and I say the captain as the person sitting in the center seat. Right. Ooh, so yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, yep. So, you know, again, I'm not going to require it, but I would say that would be more in the spirit of the event if you have a new team captain. Right. Yeah, I like that. Good call. I'm making some notes here. I'll try to update everybody. Ah, perfect. Sure this official. Yeah. So I think I think that's it. And then, like, the only other thing I would say is like, um, you know try to get your deck lists you know i mean it we don't we don't want to repeat of the reb incident um and so uh so we don't want any, anyone to have well, an ass, i'll share asterisk. a little inside tech so steve's already been working on the uh 
the the promo cards so to good. get out. We have, so good. We have thirty of them. So we got, we got thirty Red Hellmel blasts this year. <laughs> Perfect. So Perfect. So so yeah, we want uh, we don't want anyone to have an asterisk next to their uh, victory if they if they happen to prevail uh with with a bad configuration oh, we need something we need it was just great just to be like as dramatic as <laughs> prince harry was over this dumb fucking magic event like oh my god they had six ribs or whatever it was so fun <laughs> um <laughs> you should have seen the chat blowing up jason's like fuck these cheaters what the hell like, i don't fucking even know if they even applied it was great <laughs> So I'm hoping cheaters. somebody screws up again. I'm I'm like triple checking everyone. I'm making everyone turn it in the night it's before. It's so Ohio that every year the winner has an asterisk next to it. You oh, know? God <laughs> damn it! God damn it! Yeah. Oh, he ran four soul rings. How did he not know that was a thing? You know. Right? <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. So so I guess there won't be any sideboarded soul rings this year. Uh, I guess. <laughs> Well, I don't know. That's a that's a whole debate too. That that never goes away. That's a, he will not let that one go down. I mean, there's more altars about sideboarded soul rings and oh yeah, it just it never stops. I feel like I saw a meme on that earlier. <laughs> Since it is the battle for Ohio, can we say that instead of draws being orb flips, it's a 15 minute timer of who can steal the most catalytic converters? <laughs> I no, feel like there are cars. there's no one around true. there. No, you have to, yeah. Well, that just that just that just adds to the mystique. <laughs> no. Oh. You're thinking of the Kentucky event. I, don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think um yeah, it would be interesting to come up with some alternate um draw rule, but I don't have anything uh like like on tap that i i thought of to like you know spice it up but um i do um i do th- you know there's definitely different things you could do with that so um you know i we didn't talk about it on the side um but you know we did the friday night event before and it was the mono green event um and i saw some thoughts uh i saw you post maybe some stuff on what you were thinking for that i think i think we do a a mono green two-headed giant so so run back to me though how that logistically will work because two-headed giant is awesome i love that i team formats are great right so given yeah so you get 30 Uh, point 30 life you play as a you know a two-headed giant okay your two decks together similar to like the three person you know like they can't you can't be running eight force of nature or whatever, so it's got to be. Um, and you draw at the same time, correct? Yeah. So you each draw. You each play the person directly across from you, but you okay. can you can attack creatures there, but you can shoot spells anywhere. So you can lightning bolt anybody's creature, but you can only attack the head straight across from you. Okay. Um, I might have to look up a few of the rules anyhow. I was going to say we should. Yeah, I'll have to get a refresher because. Um, yeah, we, okay. we can refresh on that. Yeah. I mean, that's not a big deal. Just you know, line up a partner for for uh, for your so, second. But head. what are the mono green? What were the mono green? What's the mono green aspect? How do we? So so then like this is we had this this uh, leprechaun effect last year. Yes. Um, and so if if your opponent played a non land non green card, they take a drink, and then you would get a a bag of gold counter. And you could remove the bag of gold counter to add a mana to your, you know, one, one green mana, or you could remove it to gain one life. And so the other thing I was thinking for two headed giant is if, uh, if if one of the heads plays a non green, the, the the other head takes the drink. <laughs> so you just have a designated drinker. Uh, yeah. So so you know yeah. when, when you, if you got like one guy with their own high alcohol tolerance, the other guy could just run like mono blue merfolk. And just just <laughs> trash your fellow head. Um, <laughs> I like it. Uh, and so I don't know. I mean, uh, there was some discussion that maybe this wasn't broken enough, but I kind of like whatever. It's the dumb event, anyhow. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's and, pretty and, and, broken. And I, like I didn't I think win. You got a lot of respect because you just played your like five color good stuff deck. And yeah, drank I think a lot. I won you know, one match. I think I won one match. Uh, I don't recall, but it was <laughs> not pretty. 
But how much um, more fun would it be if, if Angelo was next to you and he took all those drinks and, <laughs> and he's just playing craw worms and giant growths and you're fine. Like I, I don't know, this seems really fun. I do like that idea. I think I think what people are expressing is that it's not oppressive enough to it's not punishing enough to in game to the to the player playing the non green spells. Right. Well, I think I think what it was was like so the drinking is fine. The problem is that there's like so when Brian would play a non green spell, I mean he was all in. You were filling up that skull cup. <laughs> yeah, that and you skull. were going, I would fill thing. I took you were drink. going fucking nuts. I know like Raj when he was like playing, he was like drinking, but then like there were other people that they would play and then it would be like it doesn't even look like you took a sip. So, so, so is it is it a regulation amount then that we have to yeah. like so, specify? So there has to be like a drawback, and that drawback has to be. So if it was like you know every time you play a non red spell, we're gonna fill up an ounce and you're gonna take a shot, right? Then right. that would that would probably do it. But when that you just regulate it to like right. people having sips and then your opponent trying to call you out on it, and then if you're right. like that type of person that's not gonna do it, then it just kind of. I, yeah, I mean, that's we could do a shot of like to that point. To that point, I was like definitely that. trying That'll to, do it. you know, show like, look, I'm drinking like a, yeah. a third of a beer to a half of a beer per spell, right? Mm-hmm. So at least I'm I'm in the spirit. But that I put me in the bag pretty quick. So that's why I was saying I feel like the way to really do it or encourage it to to encourage deck building to follow that is to punish it more in game in some way. So I don't know how you would go about that, but like giving well, your I mean, opponent could, a benefit uh, is good, but giving yourself a, like something where like maybe every time you play a non-green spell, then you get a tax counter or something that like your next spell costs one more or so. I don't know, something where to like prevent that, like just chaining good I stuff I mean, you together. could remove like two bag of gold counters to draw a card, something like that. I mean, there that's a pretty go. serious that's, like... That's you know, better. that's a pretty serious I mean, upsell. That's that's I mean that I think that would sell me more into playing more green spells, even with the drawback of having a drink, right? Because now my opponent not only gets mana if they want, but they could also convert that into card draw, right? And I also don't really want to like force people to get drunk that aren't really drinkers. I don't know. It's, it's supposed to be fun. Well, you're well not, that's, you know, the, so. that's the problem. That's that's where you got to, like, stop thinking like that because you're not forcing anybody to do anything. They can just play some fucking grizzly bears. Right. right? Yeah, but not not when your freaking second head's an asshole. He's running mono red. Oh, but. well, I don't know about the two-headed giant thing. Like, right. But. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I was saying, like, if to really, like, bring out the different green cards, right, uh, if it if they if you allow them to draw off of it, then either take it, make a green or like two, two so, bad, so what about two this? Right, so is a card. If if we're doing the, the the second head draws, what if your your second head's a random person and they're not really pre, you know, your deck isn't pre constructed, so you don't know. And like I, someone was talking about where they had a two hundred giant event, and then after each event, they kind of like just shifted a little bit clockwise, so like. Now you're playing against whoever you just was your partner. So you're going into this thing knowing you could just fuck anybody up, you know, and, and you could really be the, the, the jag that just shows up with just, you know, <laughs> mono red and you don't know who your opponent's, your partner's going to be. And we just pull up a random. Um, <laughs> one thing I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to back up just to keep for keeping score this year. So I think I'm going to bring poker chips. And okay. when you when you pay the entrance fee, we'll give you that amount of poker chips. Okay. And so, like, anytime you play anything, you're just anti in like you can ante, fifty cents or ante. something. Got it. But Perfect. if you want to, if you want to, you know, go a little harder, you can. You know, you just have okay. to. Hey, I'll up the ante. You you in for this? And so you can get some bigger pots going or whatever you want. But that way, I think, and then we could just at the end, just whatever team has the most money is the winner, and then we'll just that'll all be charity money. And we'll like, probably have a buy-in if you want to buy back in because you get booted out and get the charity an extra 20 bucks. Here's another $20 in poker chips, and we'll just keep going that way. Because I got a nice set of poker chips anyhow. And I think that might be a little cleaner than, you know, with tokens and all that. Kind of, I think it'd be kind of cool. I'd like to just shove a big stack, like, how you feel about this? Like, fuck you, man. We're going all in. I'm 
30 bucks like in this that. game or something you know i think that'd be cool so no um, i like that i, like I think that. that'd be fun for for keeping track of the the winning teams or whatever is just and hopefully at some point somebody's just sitting out a big stack of like badass chips or whatever that's kind of cool and so so if you're Angela. doing that then it wouldn't necessarily have to have your your second head from your own team you know you could just be whatever and and <laughs> And you're just playing, hopefully, a green deck. But if you if you got a lot of splashes, it's really not your problem. It's the other guy's problem. <laughs> I don't know. I think the chaos that might ensue. That's too <laughs> much. Know. I feel like that's too much chaos uh, for... Um, I think that could be too chaotic. Because I feel like okay. then you you might just have the opposite of what you want, where no one's playing a green deck. And then... Yeah, uh, this is true. All right. So I feel like the um, the taking a drink is good, and I feel like the uh, the effects are good. But I think that adding one more ability of removing two gold counters to draw a card, I think, is is what should be added to the to the to the okay. emblem. Can we uh, add two, like, two green mana. Add two green mana. I is think that that's too good. much. I th- I think that's good. I think remove one counter to add two green. Remove two counters to draw a card. Okay. I'm I'm down with that. Cause like, yeah, I mean, if you want to get let me play my craw worm, then do it. You know, like that's I think that I think that makes it more punishing, right? And then, you know, it gets people thinking more about keeping their deck on on theme. Yeah. I like it. As long as we just keep the, I think we need to keep the drinking aspect because there's nothing better than watching somebody throw it up in the backyard and you're like, you shouldn't have countered my fucking shit. <laughs> Fair. All right. I like it. Yeah, no, I just don't, I don't feel like um, adding in the kind of, uh, you know, targeted potential to like target your opponent basically with drinks yeah that might be the, yeah. i just I, i'm just brainstorming that's all right yeah I, no no i think i think it's good <laughs> to brainstorm i i was just saying what i was thinking which is like uh exactly you know we gotta reduce some of the chaos on friday i think um you know but i think I that's see. a really cool idea to have as a two-headed giant to add a little bit of punishing more punishment in-game punishment to the to the emblem right and then might be overkill but at the same time like you said like i want to play ancestral that like, you get too green so what are you going to do with it you can make a, a crawl worm you're gonna play eureka <laughs> so the only the only concern that i have about doing the two-headed giant is because like last year you know on what was it saturday when we had the tournament we had like 15 18 people however many people there but like the friday we had like six so yeah. that that it it playing two headed giant halves the number of uh like games you can have going on so if okay. we don't have like a big turnout then i mean you could potentially ha- get in a situation where now you get like two guys just sitting around that's fair. You know I mean? And I and and being the spike that I am, I would have built my green deck to play specifically only with my partner's deck because it'll be some crazy combos in there. So uh, I wouldn't want to switch partners. No, I, I wouldn't care. But I, I get your point to basically say, like, you're going to play two matches, then be done. Right. Is that what you're kind of you're, that's kind of your point, right? Yeah. If we don't have a whole lot of people there, then, yeah, you're going to play two matches and then, you know the team that has a buy is just is just going to be two people just sitting there just like with their dick in their hands so right right you well, know, we can, they, they wouldn't like, i don't know if we could make sure that it, like i don't know if we could just like promote you, you it early one odd person that's a problem i mean you you matching up two you're not matching up uh you're not matching up three oh, wait hang on sorry but i feel like thing. it's it's reasonable it's a reasonable concern so i would say our primary plan would be to play two at a giant. And then if there's like, uh, if there's a reason that we can't, but again, I guess I would say, 
We just kind of we what switch we it play? up. Three we rounds just say we'll this? we'll say we'll play three rounds. Yeah, we're so, gonna play three rounds. This. Whatever it is, it. right? I mean, it'll be fine. It'll be, play three rounds. Um, I wanted to uh to reopen potential for having like a uh crack and boosties as a potential thing. And I know you guys don't like the new cards so much, but it is fun sometimes. Um, so. That's the booster tutor format where you play build an EC legal deck and then you play booster tutor in your deck. Um, but the other thing that I say is like normally I like to limit it to a specific set. So it's not chaos boosters. So by limiting it to like a some certain packs, then, you know, maybe you don't have to read all the cards or at least the mechanics are like, you know, limited to a certain uh, like run of mechanics. So we did. Uh, f- Brexia March of the Machines Kraken Boosters, and that was fun. Um, I learned some of the cards after a couple rounds, so uh, when I was opening things, but um, yeah, it's a fun format. It's basically, you build a 60 card deck, no sideboard, then you can either play Booster Shooter or you can open a pack and sideboard from the pack during sideboarding. Um, if you, if you, and you can do that even if you play Booster Shooter in your deck. Um, but you, you don't have no pre-built sideboards, so it's a pretty fun format and it's obviously proxy friendly. So I would say, even if we're not going to have it on the official docket, um, I'll send you guys the deck building and deck construction rules. Maybe you guys want to put together something and we can pick a set and I can bring a box. We tried that and, one uh, night yeah. just for our group and. Like, yeah. I don't know, maybe maybe it was just bad luck, but I didn't draw a really shit I wanted. Like everything <laughs> was wasn't as good as what I had in my deck. Like then I would crack like four boosters. And I had like two cards in there. I'm like eh, right, you know. yeah. yeah. I don't know, I that. which is weird. But I don't know. Maybe it's because they were just, shitty sets too. Just weren't getting stuff that was like uh like as powerful as an Urnum or something. Like Urnum is better than this. I'm going to get right, it. right, yeah. I'm like oh, wow. but uh, yeah, it might be cool. I. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of other opportunities. I mean, I got a sweet cube we never got to. Uh, last year we played those old, uh, the the Pro Tour decks or whatever. That was pretty cool. Yeah, um, we played, there was a cube. I didn't get to play it. Uh, which cube was it? The Temp- Tempest? No. Was, yeah, uh, we did Onslaught. Mirage, Mirage uh, Block. We Mirage did that block. one. And that was yeah. pretty fun. Yeah. I do have a Nurse's Block uh, okay. cube. Which is pretty cool. And then I have one that's just pure cool. chaos. And it actually has booster tutors and all that kind of Ooh. it's all it's all old border shit, but it's got a okay. lot of and then we we kind of modified things and you know, if if a card didn't seem playable, something just sharpied over like ah, this thing should, shouldn't cost five, should cost two. So it's this a little is... busted. That's kind of a cool one. Um nice. Okay. I did it. I would love to get so I got this cool game I made of uh, chaos orb flipping. I don't know if okay. you, you probably didn't see it, but I don't, I've got a working copy of it. But there's more I want to do. I'd love to okay. get a tournament going of it. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty fun. It wouldn't. It's not very complicated. It's pretty easy to explain. But you got to okay. flip cards onto things, and they have little targets. And if you cover their targets, basically they die. Okay. But it's got. There's a lot of shit going on. It's pretty fun. Everyone that's played it's really been very positive. Okay. Um, we played a few just fuck around games. I would love to get an actual like eight person event where you know you yeah. play it and stuff. But I got to get it done and printed and and together by March. I've just been stra- so strapped for time. Um, oh yeah, working way oh, too yeah. much. But because I want to make it's, I, I've started working on the giant set, which are like the bigger cards, and then gonna make some stuff with like the little cards, you know, the little tiny ones and stuff. So that they're harder to hit, but they're cheaper to play and. Uh, there's there's something to this game. It's pretty cool. It is a lot of fun, and you get your chaos orb flips in. You practice, okay. and uh, it, it there's a lot of uh, kind of random ass endings, and you can you know cancel everything and pick them all back up to your hand and replay them and cancel turns. And there's a lot of cool shit that goes on. So I like the game, okay. but it's um, unfortunately it's one of the things I just haven't had time to do. So is there's there a small cool chance if I, if I can get it done, I'll send everybody a copy like. Uh, you know, three, four what's weeks the, ahead of time. What's the working title? What's the what's the working uh, title? Orbs of Chaos. Okay, Orbs of Chaos. I yeah, like it. yeah. So you got a you got an arena where you throw all your dudes down, and then you got a whole stack of orbs, and and they have different effects on them as you flip them on okay. to 
and and there's point values on your guys so you're gonna kind of build a team if you're to like warhammer so you can pick like okay this guy's got like five little tiny orbs that are hard to hit he's got a little higher price than the guy that just got one or something so you can get more Sweet. characters or less and i don't know there, there's a lot to it it's it's actually coming together it's pretty cool i've I made some like, shitty games in my day. I feel like it's it's decent. I think it's it's on its way. With how it was last year, like we're gonna have time to like do all that shit, right? If we want to yeah. play like Orbs of Chaos, like it's just like, hey everybody, let's play Orbs of Chaos. And everybody's just like, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, I like feel last like last year it was just kind of a shit show. Everybody was just doing whatever, and then every now yeah. and then we'd sit down and play some magic. So yeah, no, I feel like having if you have the <clears throat> I agree. You have the green event as like on the calendar thing, and then naturally you'll say, "Hey, I have this cube. I have this. I have that. What do you guys want to play?" And yeah, we'll, and then we'll everyone's got something. poker chips. If you want to bet on anything, all right, be like, "There's going to be yeah. people outside smoking and drinking, and people playing upstairs and downstairs and whatever." Just... Did, did you get in on the bullshit draft, Raja, on Saturday? No, yeah. no, I didn't. Yeah, I think we need to do that Friday when everyone's still drunk. That's better. Or you could do like Jason did and just wake up and just slam an entire bottle of like, Angel's Envy or something and be lit by 11. You know, you could do it that way, too. But uh, um, but that was a lot of fun. I didn't, I didn't I love, that. I love the I, bullshit crap. I, uh, if I remember, yeah, I was basically like really needing sleep. So I like ended up like I think I slept like right up until we started playing on Saturday. Like I did not move uh, until right before we started i think everyone was actually waiting for me uh downstairs uh to start well, i just so. remember that friday me and rock we were sitting there playing pre-modern at like 4 30 in the morning and you yeah. bust out some fucking stupid blue deck and you were literally taking like 30 minute turn just drawing and i'm like what's happening here the, just, is, i've got like a isn't goblet. that the best thing to do at yeah. three in the morning is watch I'm someone like play a combo half deck asleep. i have no idea what's going on you draw for like 20 minutes and then you're just like you win yeah. <laughs> what yep. the- i'm dead uh <laughs> we played the 1996 world champs decks at the airbnb on eternal weekend uh so that is um that is uh, Preston Poulter and uh, Mark Justice and uh, some other names in there. But basically, that was when you had to play five of each. You had to play five cards from each set. So, like, you had to play Homelands in your deck. Homeland, so, like, everybody barbed uh, whatever the fuck. Barbed Sexton. Yeah, uh, is that? You know, no, the, um, what's the stupid Homelands card? Puts the minus one counters. Uh, serrated, arrows. Serrated, serrated arrows. Yeah. Serrated arrows. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's yeah, good. Them. That's a good card. Serrated arrows is really good. Yeah. Uh, Dude, so the only thing I the only thing I noticed about playing those uh, ninety five champion decks were very similar to our anti decks. Oh. Because they're alpha oh, alliances, and there was and like yeah. I was playing. I'm like I could build this an anti. Yeah. Like this isn't that. This is a necro with you know the pump knights and yep. you know like so it 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 was very reminiscent of like alpha Actually, alliances was anti. Speaking um, of that, I should build that deck. I was playing the Land Tax, um, uh, Land Tax Armageddon Sylvan Library uh, engine with um, Zurin Orb also, and uh, the finisher is Autumn Willow, right? Like mm-hmm. you, you get an Autumn Willow out and they can't do anything. Like how are they going to remove it? What do you uh, do with that? It's an unbeatable card. Yeah. So do yeah. You. So uh, that's that's how I took it down, ninety six style that deck it's cool I like yeah that. so yeah no I, I enjoyed playing those and i was the one problem that that entire eternal weekend i had a um Im, impacted tooth mm. and uh come when i got home my whole face was swollen up and like on monday they're like you got a serious problem and i went to the and i couldn't get in and then finally a dentist came in and did a full root canal and just pus oh drained out God. of it and they're like uh. you would have died in a couple of days it was so bad it was so Oh my fact, god! It, it kind of screwed my whole weekend up because I was trying to have fun. I was trying to get drunk, and it just like, damn, why is my tooth hurt so bad? And it was, it was like a major, like, don't fuck around anymore, Brian. Like, this is this is a problem, dude. You, like, you can't go much, and and no one, no doctors could see me when I got back, and they're all like, oh looked up for a while, and you're like, making my, my wife, teeth hurt. You're making my teeth hurt. Over yeah, my wife, uh, you know, used to work in dentistry, so she knew somebody that got me in. 
and they get in there and just they're like you can just hear him like holy shit this is really bad dude like you didn't you need to get this looked at i'm like yeah i had a freaking bell for ohio dude i can't i can't <laughs> not do that so oh man i don't know if i'll be on like eric and some of those other guys levels but i might feel a little better this year it should be good uh, hopefully yeah goodness well, yeah, I think uh, we need to get a bullshit draft in, uh, maybe a little orbs of chaos, maybe a cube or two, um, you know, anything you got, I don't know, just put it together. And even if it's a small, uh, you know, just throw it in the discord and say, hey, I want to play some of this or whatever. But I think if we just got computer uh, like poker chips, we could just be betting on everything yeah. and be like, man, I want to play a $10 high stakes anti game. Who's in, you know, like. <laughs> see who's got some balls or not whatever I mean, let's risk case you charity gets a little more money or something you know there you go what you just I do like jason it. it looked like you like dis- <laughs> it's very What's, um, disturbing you kind of disappeared I'm, I'm, on this, I'm on this laptop so i get to like move around yeah you look like you just sort of went down an elevator yeah what um what uh what charity are we going to benefit uh, probably Maybe. the same one as last year that I slowly took around. To... Hang on, I got them over here. They sent me a letter. I hung it up. <laughs> that was your bringing to show it. Yeah, compassion delivers. It was one of the guys. Oh yes, was there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. For yeah. fans. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. So that seemed cool. Yeah. I mean, I was good with that. Yeah. It took me a little while to actually make the donation, but I did it eventually. Yeah. No, that's slow. cool. Just no, that's good. All of it for a while, put it in Bitcoin. And once it went up enough, I could. I mean, yeah, yeah. You got to make charity. the money yeah, work for you. I got to make the money work for you. Um, I mean, we should just use it to help pay for people that uh, had their catalytic converters and the copper stolen out of their air conditioning <laughs> units. That's a, probably a fund for that. The uh, copper, copper <laughs> theft recovery yeah. fund. But, so no that's a, that sounds like a good deal guys i think um it sounds like a, it's going to be a good weekend um you have the so, same crew you got any new people that might have to make it or so we're talking about the 15th and 16th of march right i think that's that, yeah yeah okay. the earlier so, date of the two yeah so for that weekend we have a couple guys who can't make it but um so i think angelo might be out again for saturday but so he might have to do his assassin you gonna fucking show friday. friday night again <laughs> secure the win before the main event even happens. he, God, he might have to do that uh, again this year just because he got he he um is teaching middle school now uh he was teaching high school before but like i think it's a concert or something uh the next day uh so we'll see um but otherwise um assassinate someone in a foreign country that's a killer <laughs> man i'm freaking <sighs> he's he's so good at limited man like uh yeah i know that's what, everything we pulled out like he just because he crushed that uh, yeah mirage he, block draft i can't imagine anyone's like really up to speed on the technology of that but he he seemed to pull it out and, like, yeah no he he's really good at limited um uh, but but I think um, I'm hoping to see like David Lance, who's um, living in Columbus now. He he represents um, with the Cleveland Rocks, but maybe he would play with those guys if he could come. Uh, and that would be cool uh, from Team Sirius. And I'm hoping that Nam Tran from Team Sirius could come. He is like a very good workshops player, vintage player, and he's played like. Um, a uh, bunch of different old school decks, but he's played shops for, but I'm hoping that he could come. Uh, he's like kind of had backed off of magic for a bit and he came to eternal weekend. And so I'm hoping to like, keep him in, keep him in the loop of going to stuff. Yeah, you know, just show up to a fun event like this or just where it doesn't really matter. You know, just hang out. New attitude. Yeah. 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 No. And, and he's, he's played old school before, but like, uh, but yeah, he just, he had took a break from magic kind of in general kind of. So, um and then uh of course steven and then um chad chad is the other guy that i was hoping that could be able to come this year chad frazier um he played in the thrash bash you guys might have met him out there he had right, the yeah. sweet well, cosplay um this year um as uh uh the main bad guy. 
Uh, he you won. Yeah, is it this year though. I thought he won last year. Was it this year? No, it was this year. It? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Dressed like yeah, that guy's yeah. my favorite dude ever. Dude, I yeah. love that guy. He's Chad, yeah. a legend. Yeah. yeah. Oh god, and I want him to come. Yes, tell him he yeah. has to. Yeah. Whatever. So, so I'm gonna I'll try make to up get some him excuse if he can. And I'll I'll cover for him because that dude's awesome, man. Yeah. Is he a really, like he showed really up sweet dressed guy. as the freaking thrashing guy and won the freaking event. I'm like, yeah, dude, you've done it. You've yep. you've lived the ultimate <laughs> dream. Yeah, yeah. So so Chad is a really sweet guy from Cleveland. So uh, he's from Lakewood down the road from Angelo. So hopefully he can come. Uh, he's like a guy that again like. He hasn't really played much old school just because he doesn't own the cards, right? That's so, what he said. He's like, yeah, I don't really do much old school, but I like thrash in the movie. <laughs> and I'm like, that's the coolest fucking thing I've ever heard. Really. Like, it's you it's true. The, you came to an old school event because you liked this the theme bizarre of ass stupid movie that no one's ever seen. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, he had me at that. Like, yeah, he's like, I don't really play old school, but I like he, thrashing. Dude, I'll tell you. It's, listen, this guy. How can I not be that guy? He he has some of the best luck too, right? Like he has the um the newcomers the gift. So he came to the first time uh, to the TSI the land uh, to play the vintage my my mm-hmm. invitational. His first time playing vintage, he picked up workshops aggro deck and he won the fucking thing. Uh, his first time. Maybe he's just a proficient cheater. Maybe I don't know. Maybe we need. <laughs> you know what? I, no, I'm I, just you know, um, Chad is just such a nice guy. I think his energy just like comes through, right? And like the cards are like, I'm going to. I like this fellow. I'm going to shuffle well and give him yeah. nice seven card hand. Yeah, he's got the good energy. I don't know. I just I love that guy. Yeah, yeah. he's awesome. I really hope he can make it. Yeah, so that Chad too, and then um, and then um, can you get a team of? Can you get six? Can you get two teams of three? You think? We're hoping. Uh, serious, that's what I was to, serious. Yeah, just trying to feel it out and see if we can make like basically if Nam can come, then I could probably build a team around Nam. So um, that's the the goal and the plan there. So yeah, trying to get two teams. Excellent. Hey, I want to share. You, you like altars? I'm going to share a couple. Yeah. Like, so I, I've had this idea for a while of, I love spell blast. I think it's one of my favorite counter spells to splash. I love it. Because and and so like I got a hold of Brian Snotty. I'm like, hey, I want a spell blast for like a lightning bolt and balance and chaos orb and all this. And and he responded, he's like, I do not understand what you're talking about, nor do I want to paint it. I'm like, damn, dude. Like, all right. Like he, he was he, serious. Like he. Cool. He understands Shut me down. It. Like I am not he, fucking around with this. I don't, so he, he must not be a magic player. He understands it, but he doesn't want to paint it. No, he said, "I do not understand it. I do not want to paint it." So anyhow, oh. so well, that here, was the dude, end of no, Brian listen. doing it. So I got a hold of MG uh, Alters and I asked him to do. So this is the counter spell of okay. uh, Lightning Bolt. Okay. And then he did. Uh, oh wait, hang on. Next was the. He did uh, balance. Balance. He's, he's blowing the balance part, which I love. I mean, the whole balance is shooting. And then he did uh, the Chaos Orb, which might Dude, be Dude, I love favorite. the Chaos Orb. It's so good. Like, he's just ripping the Chaos Orb apart. <laughs> and then the last one is the uh, the swords, the plush here. Just ripping the swords out of his hand. So that. I'm super pumped for these. I'm, I'm really glad he, he did such a good job because I was kind of vague on what I wanted, but I'm like, yeah, this is what I... Because this is all the shit, you know, like everyone plays... Was it flash counter by mm-hmm. the goddamn racist guy, or whatever? If like a blue and one to counter an instant, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. All you're gonna counter is a damn. You're gonna counter swords. You're gonna counter freaking lightning bolt. But you know what else you can counter? You can counter balance. You can counter chaos or You can counter moxes for one. Mm-hmm. I have blown more people off with spell blast, so I'm super super pumped. This is my my new sweet. Yeah, so can the, you guys give close. me one sec? I gotta just talk to my wife real quick. Uh, sure, we'll allow it. But yeah, I think the I think the chaos orb might be the best, right? I th- I think so. Just that chaos orb, like just disintegrating and falling <laughs> just, apart, is amazing. Just a naked dude with a freaking line call. Just fuck your chaos orb. Yeah. <laughs> So good. Uh, 
I'm super excited about them. I think those are great. Yeah, no, those are awesome, man. I would say um, uh, what you just said, though, is uh, the key thing about uh, the the artist alters and getting them to do stuff is that uh, they have many, many of them are way past thinking of ideas. Uh, they basically, <clears throat> uh, you know, even when working for wizards, they have an art director, right? So when they like come yeah. with a sketch or something, they give this art director the sketch and the art director says, no, not this. And then they describe to them. And then the art director will even like, you know, give a mock-up or give the wordings or whatever and say, change this, change that. So for Brian, especially, uh, and many, many of the original artists, like, if you are too vague, and I, I learned this, like, they'll just say no, like what he said, like, because he's like, yeah, I, he's like I, no. I don't have the time to, like, the brain cycles to put into what you're describing and try to figure it out. But if you have the ability to mock it up, right? Like, now, if you sent this to Brian Snoddy and said, like, this is what I mean. This is like, what I want. He could probably do it. Yeah. He would do it, right? He did, he's he did like, some oh, great, I see uh, boomerangs for me. Because I, I, he did a set of <laughs> boomerangs, and I loved them. They turned out pretty cool. They were all like, I don't know. They all, I don't know what you call them. They're all partying on a barbecue. And I mean, they're, they're just funny. I don't know. He did a great job. So I was like, oh, this Brian Sunny guy is awesome. Then I okay. hit him up with the next round. He's like, no. No. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn. All right. Sorry, man. Yeah. So yeah, no. so you you've dealt with a lot more of them. So be be real specific, huh? For or, a lot of them, they want like they you know, and visual mockups are like very right. helpful, right? So you know, I go on Photoshop sometimes, and like there's people who do better and spend longer on it. But the longer you spend on like that part of it, and very more clearly say like and show what you want, then they can say like yes, I could do that, or no, I'm not going to do that. But it's more clear. And like uh, the for example, How do you get a hold of all your guys. You I mean, just find them on Facebook and stuff like that, or is that the good question? Uh, yeah, Facebook. Um, you, you probably have one of the cooler collection of altars, really. I mean, if, thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, I, you do. You do a great job of like kind of filling out the deck or whatever. And uh, I, yeah. uh, I was able to play a fully signed seven seventy five. In uh, <laughs> love it. I love this one. <laughs> the full seventy-five was signed, and in 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 the uh, champs, yeah, my vintage deck was fully signed, <clears throat> and uh, with a lot of alters too. I'm gonna drop the uh, picture into the into the. Can chat you share? Here. You can share the screen. Um, yeah, share my screen too. Uh -huh. Share. That's the deck picture I took this morning. Damn. So ancestral. So yeah, this is um like I uh, I didn't get my deck was pretty good, but a big part of picking the deck was that I could get I was six cards short from being <laughs> fully signed, so I was able to borrow the cards that I didn't have, I have to send them back though, because some of them are rare. But I'm just like, can I borrow this card? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that Lotus has seen a couple, it's been cast a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is what's great about that Lotus is that, you know, I didn't get it signed, but you can see that it got signed and then like definitely continued to get played. Like, yeah, like, like, because the, the signatures like worn like in spots, so like they definitely got it signed and then kept playing it for some number of games, right? Like, yeah. like thanks for signing this. I'm gonna go run it over with my car a couple times. <laughs> well, you know, like I, you know, the the card was probably already beat to hell, right? And then they were like, "Can you sign this?" And then they just put it right back in their deck, right? <laughs> I love it, dude. That's amazing. I love a good worn card. So yeah, man, I, I really love that uh Lotus. Um I don't have an, an altered uh an artist altered black lotus, but um I don't know. I would be hard pressed to ever get rid of this one even if I found like an upgrade. <laughs> Is that yours? That's your actual that's, that's my not lotus. one you had to return. 
No, that's yeah, my Don't ever get rid of that, dude. Yeah. So good. Yeah, the ones I had to borrow were um I had to borrow a tabernacle. Um yeah, mine 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 are not signed. And then uh I had to also borrow the Oko Thief of Crowns. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh so that one's just one where there's two arts, the original art, like the main art, that artist doesn't sign, and the alternate art, that artist like only signs at conventions and will only sign like four cards at a time. So Dang. just rare, more rare. And then um uh the last card I needed was a portal to Frexia, which is an artifact that uh you tinker for it. And uh, when it comes into play, the opponent sacrifices three creatures. And then during your own upkeep, you get to pick a creature in any graveyard and reanimate it. Seems decent. Yeah. So uh, basically the goal or the idea <laughs> there is the, you wipe their board and then you reanimate yeah, their creatures. Then you reanimate and, the best and, thing, yeah. And beat Why them not? to death with their own their own dudes. So. That force will looks amazing too over here on the on the far left. God. Oh yeah, no, it's a, Jesus. It's the the fire. Uh, but yeah, so I was able, and then my middle school deck was fully signed too, but I didn't I don't have a sweet picture of that yet. So um, not in the bad to, lighting or whatever. Yeah, probably exactly. I, I need to you wake the up. Four hour window. Got to wake up yeah. early tomorrow and do it. No, tell me those aren't these? your those aren't yours are they? those are not mine but okay. i think I'm, I'm trying to i think i'm getting commissioned to do a uh, blue lightning bolt but he is put i mean he puts a lot of freaking time into these but how cool are they i love these things. they're ruining mg altered you know they are the the full moxes in the color yeah and i don't he does such a damn good job of just i mean it takes forever too to do it he's on all the what the first one was he started with the blue earthquake or something like that but uh yeah i did love these things they were so cool I'm, yeah. I'm kind of a pure i don't really love the crazy altar sometimes i don't know no i agree i'm on I, the fence I, on that stuff i think my things deck, like this get me like, off and i you know um, like my vintage deck looks like a, a hot mess like when i actually laid it out as a 75 i'm like oh my god this looks like fucking garbage uh but like it is what it is <laughs> it's fully signed and it's just a mix of new frames some cards aren't available in old frame uh so you know and then like i think some of my altars look good like in a vacuum but then like when they put them in with other other cards they don't look like on theme so like I started last year buying unlimited duels. Uh, I only have four so far, but like I started looking at my my altered duels, and I'm like, sometimes I don't like how they look, like with with other cards in my deck. Um, so, uh, not to complain, of course, you know, like uh, that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love I love someone that plays around the aesthetics or the signatures over the actual deck building. That's that seems so much better to me. It seems awesome, yeah. So, so yeah. So, there's, um, you know, uh, good, good. Um, there's always good stuff to do. Um, I have. I'm waiting for. I sent the planes from my championship deck. Um, vintage was in a weird place when I won. Uh, my deck had seven planes in it, uh, which is like hasn't happened vintage for forever i think and so i sent those actual seven planes they're like beat up beta basics uh to to jesper to have him put like doodles on like not not color alters but just like old school kind of like marker alters right yeah yeah uh because they're like beat up basics and i'm not gonna you know they're not gonna put lipstick on those pigs but like something just to kind of commemorate the the champs I'm trying to get that whole deck signed because it was not signed. Like you couldn't get many of the cards signed in the deck when I played it. So uh, that's been my project basically this year, but it's still ongoing. Oh, the blue fireball. The blue fireball is pretty legit. Yeah. <laughs> like some so, of these, I like, like I said, I really like them, but it's just kind of like. That's a cool, know. just the play on the blue and the red. I mean, it looks yeah. great. I mean, it really does. That's why I'm, that's why I think he's going to do a blue lightning bolt for me. Okay. They're not I like cheap, it. but I like no. it. No, no, I can't imagine that those are because, like you said, the number of hours that goes into kind of like 
just very detailed work on that, right? There's a lot that goes into redoing those borders, man. That's crazy. I wish I mean, Brossard is. I've always considered him to be the best, but he is so like behind, and it's not like his priority. I don't think. I think he does other stuff and try to get him to do stuff, and he just doesn't. He's like, ah, I'm I'm two years behind, dude. I'm not doing anything else. I'm like, yeah. I feel like that guy I, should be full full time doing alters. But yeah, I mean, it's hard. Other guys are catching up to it. And they're getting better. So well, it's hard too. Like you know, like I was saying with the art direction and stuff. Like when you're painting stuff that maybe you don't like it. Um, right. Yeah, it's hard absolutely. to like get motivated for it. Like Ron Spencer, I had sent him some cards, uh, and he's the one I contacted just by mail, and. Uh, I got in touch with him and I finally got one altar back and I just said like, let's cancel the other stuff. But that's been like an ongoing, like several years process where like he kind of, I, I could tell he didn't really want to do the altars that like I had described, even though he did understand it and got what I yeah, was saying. Still, still didn't like it. Eh? Yeah. And so like, I finally was just like, Hey man, you know, like it's okay. I understand you got other stuff. Like, can we do this one, you know, like, and so that was, um, Yogmoth's will. But with Homer yeah. Simpson, uh, yeah. with a hey, I'll bring that that one up. That's yeah, pull one. that up. I gotta see. Yeah. I gotta see Homer Simpson. <laughs> yeah, that's so epic. I haven't, I haven't, um, I haven't like posted that one around because like, uh, same. Like he's way backed up, so like I don't want people to be like, oh, dude, how'd you get that? Like I don't want to get hassled by people about it. But, um, that's that's what. Oh this. damn, that's good, dude. That's really... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh shit, that's good. I like the donut. Yeah, the donut. Ooh. And then note note the uh the shadow that he put of the nuclear power plant, that little detail in the yeah, background. Yeah, yeah, very nice. <laughs> so that one came out sick, right? But like when I just cut it down to just that, I think he was like, okay, that's like simple enough and you know, uh, I make a good amount of money off of it based on like the rate he was charging me. He's like, okay, it's not going to take me 30 hours. So, you know, right, like, yeah. like, okay, I'm sure we'll do that one. So, right, so uh, that one was just a case of where like, I think he understood it, but he didn't really like what I was asking him to do. So he was putting it off and put it, kept putting it at the bottom of the pile. Right. So anyway, I like those mana drain. It was pretty cool. So Ooh, I like that. The uh the mana drain the orbs of the mana draining the chaos orbs sucking the life right out of him. Yeah. <laughs> right on. So, so oh you go. Well, I was gonna ask, have you um have you I know you do new things. Have you dabbled at all in sorcery, the uh, contested realms? Have you played that game? No, around? no, I haven't. I okay. Sort of, hard for me to grab these new games even though the art on yeah, that looks it. bonkers yeah. the art yeah looks bonkers. well it's a lot of the old artists that's why yeah. it's kind of cool yeah um unfortunately jason and i are getting a little bit sucked into it because it's are you yeah it's so good dude it is, is so it? good i couldn't tell what your face was whether it was like a questioning face or like no a, no, it's, uh, no it's, it jason cool. made a face when you asked about sorcery yeah, jason, so that's like... jason sucked me into it but it, it's <laughs> I think probably the biggest problem is it's complicated. There's a lot of a lot of rules. You got to learn it. It's almost like reminds me of like uh, was it the Legend of the Five Rings or something like that. Everyone yeah, said that, that, was, was, a that was a better game. game and it's an amazing game and everyone loved it. But like it was too complicated. I never got into. It. I don't know. You know, yeah. sorcery is a little sorcery's bit. Sorcery is a lot like magic. But imagine playing magic and having uh, positioning for your creatures. Okay. So you you play on a grid and you play your creatures on different and they move around the grid and have to like claim territories and shit like that. So okay. there's a lot of like I don't know. There's you, if you it just is, like it is play, a cool game. I've really gotten into yeah. it. It's pretty fun and it, you, know, you can you can submerge stuff and you can bury artifacts and you got to dig under the ground to get them and uh, you know this is like a, a lot of cool <laughs> shit going on. But there's a lot of rules. It's I don't know. Again, I've tried to make games in the past, and I've made them too complicated, and no one got it. And it's almost like a little bit like that. Like, they kind of made it a little bit complicated, but at the same time, it's 
it's kind of common sense. Like, well, this dude, this is a shark. Obviously, he can submerge in water. Like, yeah, that's true. Yes. All right. You know, yeah. You know, yeah, that makes sense. And so, I don't know, I've kind of gotten past that uh, the entry point. Okay. But it's cool. And they're using a lot of the old school artists. And the guy is totally an old school magic guy. He's like, you know. We got jihad. We got crusade. We got disenchant. And it's like endless. Like they cast a fireball and disintegrate. And just straight. I don't know. He's kind of living my dream. I think he did. I forget what he did earlier, but he made a bunch of money. He became a millionaire. Path to exile. He was path to one exile. Of the, like art directors or co-founders or something to path the ex- path to exile. Okay. Yeah, and so yeah, so and then he decided to make his own game, which is super cool. And so, but but it's a it's a CCG though, right? Like that's yeah, part of the reason why. Game yeah, that's part you... of the reason why I was like, I don't I don't need any more uh, collectible games. Like that's why I no, like no, I, the I LCGs. totally get. It. I was just I curious. Like the LCGs. You play, you dabble in vintage and all that stuff or whatever. It's fine. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's 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 interesting. It's. Um, Kind of the craziest say, thing we... about it, the craziest thing about it though, is they've got it set up so that they're only releasing like one set a year. Okay. So it's not going to be like, it's not going to be like Magic, where like every two weeks they're releasing a new set and you have to like keep up with it. It's right. just like one set a year. So, and, but are they going to print it all year, or like, is it is there an alpha beta unlimited run so, of that set yeah, so each they, year? So they started on Kickstarter, and that was the alpha run, and they only okay. printed enough to meet the Kickstarter demand. And then they printed a beta run, which is just a reprint. Um, and you, you, the 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 big thing with uh, sorcery is like they intended to make it collectible, kind of like you know they they don't want to just print a bunch of cards. They don't want to. Uh, you know, whatever. So that they want it to be something that people can collect and that will try to hold value. Who okay. knows if that'll actually work or not? I don't know. But that sounds like I do game. not want to play that game. Then. <laughs> yeah. It's well, there's fun there's game. an entire mini set next year. Okay. Of only dragons painted by Edward Beard Jr. Hmm. <laughs> oh my god, I love Edward Beard Jr. Like as yeah. like my it is like my hero. I don't know if you ever seen some of the signatures and stuff he does. He does oh like yeah. Crazy. I like love the, the, I love all this stuff. I follow him on like you know, like this guy is amazing. So they're doing an entire set of just dragons by Edward Bridge. I'm like, God, you guys fucking get me. You What's know, the alpha, like, set, know. <laughs> the alpha set had a bunch of like Frank Franzetta art, and then in the beta, they didn't use Frank Franzetta. They used uh, Drew Tucker mm, to yeah. redo all the art for those cards. Yeah, so, so. Uh, Drew, t- uh, someone out to. Uh, glory con in january and i'm gonna have and drew tucker's gonna be there i'm gonna have him sign some sorcery cards he doesn't know that yet but nice um I don't know, it's, we, it's it is it's so you know you can tell it's coming from a magic player's point of view which i dig right and it's kind of cool i just i mean i'm i don't know someday we'll probably what's do the black entire. what's the black lotus of it so there's the a philosopher's what is the philosopher's stone. stone right and it basically cost one less <laughs> for each spell of a certain color. So there's four colors instead of five. Mm -hmm. So like every time you cast, you know, if you imagine every time you cast a spell, it costs one less, one less blue, one less red, one less green, whatever, you know, so you can kind of do that, which is sort of cool. And then they have some other like artifacts that you sack that you get like three colorless mana and you can play that for stuff. So there's a lot of similarities. Um, The other thing they do that's kind of cool is either something will be uh, unique, you can play one in your deck, okay, or it's elite and you can play two of them, or exceptional is three, is that right? Mm-hmm. And, and ordinary is four, so they kind of limited the quantity so they can kind of pressure creep stuff, and you can only get one or two of them, which right. are pretty cool. So it's okay, basically you know, like so. a deck you can have four commons <clears throat> of the same kind of a deck, three uncommons, two rares, and then like one mythic, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah, that's kind of what you. And then on top of all that shit, they do this weird thing where this dick, Jason just pulled one, but they, when you're cracking packs, I don't even know how rare they are, but they just put these super rare cards in there, like a mirror image of something, or they just change the art a little bit, like they alter it, and they're incredibly hard to find, and they're worth like thousand, two thousand bucks a piece. You just be like, oh, hey, 
Hey, I just opened a freaking uh, dwarven catapult, but oh, it's mirror image. Now it's like worth two grand or whatever. It's kind of crazy. So yeah. they did some cool stuff like that. I mean, it's it's kind of a cool game. I don't know that it's. I don't know. It, I struggle to something, invest two hundred in it because I, I think it's too complicated. I don't think it'll ever take off like Magic did, but it is fun. I just care. Yeah, you seem like a guy never... that might be. Uh, sorcery player that's all yeah it'll never uh it'll never get like really big like magic i don't think but so yeah what what it will do like i think what <laughs> it will do is like it'll be like a game that like magic players would play and then like after they're done playing magic they're, they'll play a couple games of sorcery or something like that you know okay um so anyway for the battle of ohio i'm gonna bring all my shit okay like my sorcery starter yeah. decks and stuff and if anybody wants to try it out we'll play it's fun. And I'm selling bucks. singles. I'm selling singles also. I got my binder in case you want to. Yes. It's fucking shit. So last, what is that? Today is, uh, what is today? Today is Tuesday. Yeah, so Monday night, I'm like, I'm, so I'm building my, uh, Eric a, a deck. He wants to play this ninja that throws artifacts and shit. And I'm like, all right, so I'm building this deck. And I'm like, oh, fuck. All right, this, this is this cool bomb. So you get a grid, which is, is kind of cool. So the, when the bomb goes off, the center of the spot does 20 damage, and then everything around does like seven, and then there's like okay. three, and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah. I need to get... So I'm on TCG player, and I'm buying shit. Fucking buy it from Jason for like four <laughs> bucks. I'm buying a <laughs> goddamn bomb from him. And then this morning, he's like, hey, man, my, uh, yeah, we'll have that delivered for you today. So he drives <laughs> over to my house, drops it off my freaking doorstep. I'm like, son of a bitch, That's man. That's hilarious. Like, oh, I also have a Jihad for 30 bucks, which is a really good card. I'm like, yeah, I need that. So both of those showed up the same day. I mean, you, can I get better service than this? That's if he amazing. fucking signed it, like, made up a damn signature, the only way he could make it better. But fucker, like, delivered That's it today. Amazing. I bought it last night. It was here today. Was, Fuck you, Amazon. You can't do this shit. Like, this is... What service? <laughs> what service? It's the giver of magic on TCG Player. I like, kind of write, I'll, like, giver of magic. Like, it's this, that's this fucking Instagram, your uh, Discord handle. I'm not that say I'm glad to buy it from him, but... That's hilarious. Yeah, so, it's too funny, yeah. So, he... Freaking snag four bucks off on me today. It's brutal. <laughs> 34 bucks. 30 well, 34, yeah. The damn jihad. He opened Same the other thing. jacket. Yeah, G- jihad and Crusade jacket. and TCG player won't put Jihad or Crus- Crusade on there because it oh. violates their personal feelings. Basically, they don't want a bunch of shit, which I get. But I still don't see it. I don't have a problem with Jihad or Crusade. Yeah, maybe yeah. the other ones, but those those don't bother me. I don't know. So we can't buy uh, the the Jihad card game cards on TCG Player either. I'm guessing. Uh, uh, I imagine oh, Vampire the Masquerade. Yeah. yeah, that's gonna be completely out of question. <laughs> well, that sounds cool. I'll I'll definitely throw down on some games of sorcery for sure. Yeah. Well, we can we can uh, we can introduce you. It's fine. You got you got a lot going on, man. Yeah. One thing Try I did it. want to tell you, Brian, they so somebody made a play mat for sorcery because the grid for sorcery is uh what is it five by four grid so it's twenty squares and you start in the center back of both squares but somebody made a it looks like a fucked up diamond so that uh, you can play four player games. Oh, oh. god! Oh yeah. It'd be Four so player good. sounds insane. Dude. Oh, it'd be so good. Can you imagine? I can imagine, but I don't know that I want to. So there's like so, a, there's like an artifact in sorcery where you play it. It's like a globe, and then it connects the top and the bottom squares of the board so that you can like walk from your starting point to the opponent's starting point in like one move. But if you're on like a diamond, if you're airborne, you can go diagonal and go from like the northeast to the southwest. <sighs> Be so good. Oh, oh my well, god! Yeah, you're right. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. 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 So well, there'll be there'll be shit to die and be done in the future, but I will share the game that I recently purchased, which is called Butts on Things. Okay. And oh, sounds amazing. It's just, uh, it's like, it's a card game, and the mechanics of it are pretty simple. You basically play your cards onto the table in a grid, 
and uh, you try to capture the. Um, it's yeah. There's two versions this of it. Here, it it's like not that one though. Yeah, but it's not that one. There's two, two different ones. It's it's that, but it's butts on things, and the game is called um, butts on things game. Put that um because there's two versions of the game and like one is the good one and one is not um butts on things yeah but a lot of butts on things so basically yeah it's just like but but that's what it's fun for the kids because the artwork is hilarious and it's just like there's a taco butt there's a disco ball butt there's (laughs) there's a milkshake butt there's oh yeah my kids would be into that you got kids, right? I don't know much about you. What do you, you got kids in the family, or what are you? Uh, so I got seven-year-old son, I got a nine-year-old daughter, and I got a twenty-one-year-old daughter. So nice. Uh, okay, yeah. Twenty-one-year-old is not at the home, uh, but yeah. we got. Well, that's good. She's, she's <laughs> this way good. to win. <laughs> no, definitely winning. Uh, so ooh, butts in space. Um, yeah. I'll have to check that one out. I haven't seen that one. So my my son just cracks up because it's like. He's like, football, but <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't he doesn't ever win, but uh but yeah, he loves he loves the butts. Uh you want those dads that like your kids have to learn the hard way and you just kick their ass every time in a game. Oh yeah, I don't or, let them win. You don't let them win. Yeah. All right, nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't let them win. Because because they're gonna beat me eventually. So like, you know, uh it's gonna feel so good when they do, right? Oh yeah, and like they do sometimes. Like my son is actually really good at checkers, um, and like I don't know if you guys have played checkers recently, but uh, Dude, I won checkers champion of sixth grade. No way! Well, that's my biggest accomplishment in life. I actually so beat so the what is sixth grade? So I'll have to get some strategy advice from you because yeah, this is the one. This is it. This is butts on things. The cheek to cheek game. Yeah. Oh okay okay. Um, because the way you you win or the way you capture cards is by by making a row or a column that's uh, uh, butted by two butts that are matching, basically. Right? Oh, nice. um, okay. So, um, so when you do that, then you get the whole row, and then you have to like, if if someone breaks the grid apart, then the next person has to they have to build the grid back as like part of their play. So, uh, it's pretty fun. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I definitely don't let them win. They don't like playing with me most games. But yeah, when they do beat me, um, I definitely give them, you know, the win. Uh, I I have lost many times at Trolls Trouble, uh, which is the Popomatic Trouble game, but with the Trolls the branding. Trolls. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, any of those games that have like high variance, um, I uh, I don't do good at. But. One game that we like to play a lot with the kids is uh, it's called Ticket to Ride. Have you ever played it? I have not played it, but I, I have seen it. Um, what are, what is the age? Like my son just started reading like at the beginning of uh, he was you know he just turned seven, so he's uh, my, uh, he's, he's in my, first grade. My uh, five year old plays it. Okay, so she you, you don't have to read or anything. It's okay. just like you get a map of the U.S. and there's all these like train routes and they're different colors. And okay. so you draw a card and it'll have like uh, so you'll have like oh, I got I got three red train cars. So that means I can make a train. I can claim a train route train route that's like three red colors. Right. And so like you get points for just like claiming routes across the u.s but the real trick to it is you draw these cards and it'll say you get bonus points if you make a route from like new york to los angeles or whatever and so it was funny because you're talking about like letting your kids win and stuff like that it's perfect because it's like the ultimate like if you want to make a kid cry you can make a kid cry at the end of this game because (laughs) Because like you're they would have there, connected like, every right, single right. one, and then like well, yeah, yeah, bonus, points. Kids bonus, cry, point. bonus point, exactly. Because like they're playing, and like they they make they make all these little bullshit routes all over the place, and they're getting all these little points on the point track. But then in the end, you're like, 
All right, bitch. I just connected this one. Give me 20 <laughs> points. Give me 40 bonus. points. Give me bonus. 50 <laughs> points. And yeah, and you just end up fucking their world in the end of it, dude. And it is so fun because the, the little ones, she'll be like, I'm Six winning. Minutes, and I like, appreciate that about you. So, but it's, yeah. good, it's good in that, like, the game during in game, like, they get yeah. to have fun. And at the yeah, end, exactly. they, so, like, you get to crush them. At the them end, they, at the the end they yeah. go, yeah. they go to bed crying, but it's exactly. Fine. It's you like crush fun. their they they have fun and then you crush their dreams yeah and then it it makes them learn next time like right bitch, pay you attention can't, you can't yeah. step up on this you know <laughs> <laughs> that's it don't fuck with daddy he knows how this shit goes down <laughs> So, yeah, so perfect. All right, Ticket to Ride. All right, well, it's I fun. did. It's a good the, one. The game I got for this year um, is uh, Risk. Uh, we, I realized we, we don't have a copy of Risk, and so I bought the old wooden Risk uh, version, like the classic one, and we're going to play it for days. <laughs> okay. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah, it's fun. Like, I didn't think I'd like it, but then a bunch of people told me but it was the, good. The kids started crying. He loved it. He was like, this yeah. is great. You're like, this so is good. the perfect game. Like, <laughs> see, like, that's the, that's, that's like the family while you're playing that's, the game. That's just during game. That and then after, years old. the child crying. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Nice. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Risk is good, man. It's a play a little play Risk. It was good. You just leave it set up in the dining room, uh, you know, go to school, come back, keep playing. What's a good version of Risk? There's a big there's a big one. Um there's a ton. Like when I was shopping for that wooden one, I saw no, like, no, no, five, there's there's like, like five different wooden ones. There was a Star Wars one, there was a Lord of the Rings one, there was a Marvel Universe one. There's a ton. I used to play shit on Risk, though. That's good. Risk is good. I, I remember, uh, I'm sure you guys have played it. Yeah, Axis and Allies. You guys played That's Axis the one. That's what I was trying to figure out. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that's the good version of it. Yeah. Ooh. Axis and Allies is the. <laughs> I never like, played it. the man's version oh of Risk. God. Yeah. That's no, like, it. it's like, it's like, you, you, just get like you just get like fast and handfuls of dice. Like, I'm going to roll 75, 20 yeah. sided dice or whatever. Yeah. Like, crazy shit it's... happens in Access and Allies. That's just cool. Okay. Like, Access and like Allies is one of those games where, like, so you've got, you've got, if you've got five people, it's great because you've got like one person is Germany, one person is Japan, and they're like the Axis, right? And then you've got the U.S., the U.K., and Russia as the allies. And each player should play one. And, like, at the beginning of the game, if you're the U.S. and if you're Japan, you're bored out of your fucking mind. Because, like, you've got to build up so that you can get over to Europe. Right. And if you're if you're the guy that's in the uh, – if you're the – if you're Germany, you're just, you know, rah, just yeah, blowing go. up everything. And, like, fucking the whole Germans. game – the whole game is the key to the whole game is having somebody who's strong playing Russia because oh. like if the Russian guy gets taken out early, you're fucked. It's so German, you gotta have, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it's a crazy game, but it lasts like you can play that like a game in Axis and Allies. I was like that shit at Gen hours. Con. You go to Gen Con and there's like the Axis and Allies of like tournament. Those are, Cool as hell. Oh, so crazy. I want to mention. I want to mention while we're on the topic of games. I want to mention one more game, which is a game that I won from Kumite, and it was designed it was by the one Dick of the Dick Measuring guys. Contest. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was. It's called Addictive Alchemy, um, and it was designed by the brother of one of the guys from the Knights there, um, and it was like a Kickstarter game, but it is. <laughs> Super fun. Um, I'll link you the board game geek. Um, <clears throat> basically, like you you have potions and the potions get you drunk. But so like as you get more drunk, you have like uh, like effects that happen to you because like each turn you want to take the potion because it gives you bonuses. But then if you take too much potion, then you get you know bad badnesses um so i forget because i haven't played in a bit but like i won the game and i sat in a box for a year and then i finally got it out and it's actually really fun uh so 
and say, and it has a, and it has a, and it has a theme of drinking, right? And the theme is basically you're playing as a wizard. You're playing as a wizard who practices alchemy and you're trying to figure out, you know, to unlock the power, right? Uh, By imbibing the different potions and putting them into your system. Looks like a cool design too. I'm digging this. Yeah. So yeah, um, pretty pretty fun one. Um, I'll uh, if I remember, I'll bring it. It's good. Go, the game plays pretty quick. So I made a game called Challenge of the Cheese. It was like the most successful game I probably had. I probably should have done something with it. Like one person becomes the cheese. And then you draw a card and it'll be like, all right, you and the cheese arm wrestle or whatever. It's just, it's got like a 150 different random cards. A lot of them are like kind of random, like, all right, whoever is the, uh, whoever's at the highest elevation at the end of 15 seconds wins. And you just freaking like jump on the fridge and you climb (laughs) upstairs and shit or (laughs) break something. I mean, there's just, there's a shitload of cards in there. And they're pretty funny. And every time people play it, it's it's a big hit because it's it's a combination of like activities. So you're you're doing shit. You're kind of your blood's flowing. You're running around the table, and you're planking, and you got your hand on person, or you yeah. Then everything has to be sung as like as if it's a musical. And you can kind of get these like cumulative like effects and shit. We had like one game where everyone had to be. You had to speak Southern. You had to be a musical, and, uh, and I don't know. I forget all this shit that was going on. And my my friends were over, and they were Indian, and they were like having a hard time with a Southern accent to begin with, and they just sing it. And it was just the greatest shit. And I'm like, and I actually took it to like a couple like a game convention, like Cincy Con or something, and played it. There were people planking on chairs, and so that was that was my best successful game I've ever done anything with. And and a lot of people come over and like, yeah, dude, I'm gonna play Challenge of Cheese. And it is fun. Challenge it's like right. it's it's the most random ass stuff. And and when my son was in college, they really got into it like serious and kind of fixed some rules. <laughs> like, hey man, you know, we we were all had our hand on the cheese, and he had to the pizza guy showed up. We had to run around. <laughs> they all ran around with the, the pizza guy with their hand on the guy, and you know, I was like, oh, that one worked out, but. You had to throw a card and hit something, but they picked something that you couldn't hit. So, like, all right, you got to pick you know, like a person. So every right. time you discard a card, you throw it at a person and stuff like that. And I don't know, it was a, it was a ton of fun. We've, we've so, done it for years. Yeah, it sounds and, like it sounds like that's what we're doing on Friday. <laughs> I know we should we should fucking play a game of challenge of cheese. You guys would be blown away. I've, I've tried to get it made because it also sounds like Angelo is going to win like, that eh, game too. To it sounds like games. one that Angelo would win. So uh. <laughs> it might. Yeah. It, it, the thing that's funny about it, the size blowing my mind, is people will not back down. So, like, my mom and my grandma had a rap battle about Jesus at, <laughs> at, at fucking Thanksgiving. I'm like, you can skip the card. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, we're rapping about Jesus right now. Like, I'm I mean, like, go, I, go. And they did it. And I'm like, damn, like, no one will ever back down. It's great. That's awesome. I mean, I can't think of anything that encompasses uh, Ohio more than a rap battle for Jesus. I mean, this come is on true. Now. This is true. You might be right. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I love it. All right, guys. Well, let's get late. I better uh, we better wrap some stuff. I'm gonna go over here and buy me an active alchemy game and uh, purchase that yet tonight to check it out. All right, anything else, Roger? Well, we got you, man. Um, no, just I'm looking forward to seeing you guys hanging out, slanging some old school cards. Um, I will, you know, try to rally support from our uh, region of Ohio and bring it down. I guess I'll say. Um, I know a lot of uh, other states are jealous of what we got going on, guys, and I, so I thank you for for bringing us together in the first place and I'm, allowing I'm us to. There. The other know, states could all get their champions, and we could put our champion against theirs. But I haven't seen anyone else fucking man enough to do it. They're well, all scared. They're all scared of shit. You know, uh, so now we to... are trying to put together like a actual Ebon Hand <laughs> event for twenty twenty four. Yeah, um, we'll reach out Steven to wants us. to do it. I'm, I'm super yeah. busy, but I'm like, I said, um, so actually, I own a company here in Kentucky that's right next to Cincinnati, and I'm like, we could do it in our factory. There you go. So 
I've got I got a shitload of tables and everything. I don't have the air conditioning. I got heat. I got good lights now. I got yeah. like some nice lights and shit. I'm like, we could have a cool ass event. Boom. Just pick it in the fall. So probably we'll do something in the in the spring. We'll do the Battle of Ohio. Maybe in the fall we'll do an we'll actual let us know. Uh, yeah. Evan okay. Hand event. Because a lot of the Kentucky guys, Indiana guys, Pennsylvania guys, they, they all come want to over. Come yeah. Tennessee, even you know, we're in the middle of all that shit. So well, the guys, the guys who've been playing old school a little bit uh, for a while and have, have found people who have found you and found what you guys are about, uh, it really resonates with people, right? Like the the kind of the Vorthos aspect, being interested in the flavor of stuff, being interested in the you know, uh, deck building competition that you host and stuff. So you've built your own following that people are going to want to come to and see you, meet you in person, right? So that's really cool, I think. The the event I would like to have is EC rules (laughs) plus alliances. Grilla Grilla Shaman restricted to one. So, so that way, Gorilla Shaman is the dominant, like, I'm going to fuck up every mock shab. So Gorilla Shaman's restricted. Maybe ban fucking Mind Twist. I'm annoyed by that card. But anyhow, it, whatever. It, it, we're going to have mice. Plus it's, alliances. So with Plus alliance. No Ice Age. You don't but, get, but you don't get Necro. Of, so you don't you get Zern Orb. You don't get all that Ice Age shit. But you have Force, though. That's what I keep you saying. Got force. You, you force. got Force. Uh, you got a lot of weird shit in alliances. Mm-hmm. But I don't think anyone's ever really dabbled in alliances without Ice Age stuff. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen that. Like yeah, you're gonna seriously have to brew. You, you can have you can have contagion. You can have uh, what's the green? You know all the free spells. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the green home. one that goes well with uh, Triskelion. Triskelion, or whatever. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of cool shit that you can do with alliances cards. But I don't. Know, that's that's my vote. But I also don't have time to put this together, so I'm like, I can host it, but someone else has to do all this. I mean, shit, I but... would, I would, not to, not to, you know, put words into your mouth, but like the the team stuff is really fun, and that's the aspect of the battle for for Ohio that I think a lot of people, in addition to just the fact that we have a lot going on in Ohio, uh, the idea of doing a team event, I think, is like what a lot of people are interested in. Or when I told them we played this, hey, we we won the battle for Ohio, and it was a team event. It was unified EC. That aspect, I think, would really attract people if you if you put that format out. And said, "Hey, we're going to do unified EC. Bring a team. Bring a team uh, of know. six. <laughs> <laughs> you just get so shitty at a certain point. Like... It gets, we're getting down to it. Marsh goblins dot deck. Uh, marsh goblins and uh, what else? What's a, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Singing tree. I love singing tree. I've never won with it. God, I love that card though." Overpaid for it and bought it when it was at its like peak peak price. I paid like a hundred bucks a piece for like singing trees, maybe two hundred. I don't even know. I don't yeah. even want to remember what I paid for my fucking singing trees. And God, they suck, and I love them. And they feel so good. I'm just berserk your shit and make it a zero. Like, wow, what are you gonna do with that? Um, Kill it. <laughs> I just gave away my my two headed giant green deck. I guess. Oh my gosh, uh, you just. Giving away all the tech first. for free. Giving away all my tech tonight. Yeah, no one's listening this late in the <laughs> podcast. Yeah, we're fucking. We lost every piece. If, if you so made it like this a far, right now, I'll turn this shit off. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll deal with maybe some vintage, a little legacy, but fucking another game. Fuck you guys. <laughs> it's all been turned off a you long ago. Look, yeah, so. you have to watch the statistics to see where uh, people stay. Uh, I, I don't like it. Shit, I'm. Once a year, I look at the recap of what I do. I, the, the point of this is to not give a fuck. That's that's what makes it great. <laughs> <laughs> to not care. I need something I don't care about. This is it. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on the chat, guys. Um, oh, I appreciate I'm, it, man. I'm thanks looking for forward to here. seeing you guys. I'm um, I'm uh, thankful that you are are helping to drive this bus for Old School Ohio. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be an awesome event. So, I'm going to try to recruit. You guys do the same, right? All right. Yep. Bring it, man. Fucking taking Cleveland down this time. Look at that shit. We come it's all you. Cincinnati. I don't know what the hell the fucking logo is, but... <laughs> hey, so 
Brian, I'll, I'll message with you about other swag that we want to do and like just some dollars if you if you have stuff in mind or already have stuff on tap, like you know what I can put into or anything like that. So we'll message on the side and figure that stuff out. But um, over the so next month, or whatever. So, all right, guys, have a good night. All right, all right man. Thank you. See you guys. We'll see you till next. Cheers. Time. Till next time. Keep it old school. <laughs> yeah. Later.